Okay, today I'm gonna try to do a full in-depth uh, every step of everything you need to know about disc brakes. This will not apply to any rear disc brakes that have uh, like actuating calipers, like power actuators for the parking brake or even the manual mechanisms for the parking brake. So if you're doing rears, this is only gonna somewhat apply. A lot of it will apply, but will be different. You will not be looking at something like this. Just throwing that out there. The other thing is, if you're doing something like a Ford um, or a lot of Chryslers, they have, you know, clips on the fronts of the, that hold the calipers to the brackets. Also going to be a little different. I'm just going to be covering the basics of a full brake job. This is my own truck. This is a 2015 GMC Sierra Denali, uh, 1500. It's a 6.2 liter, 8L90 transmission. It's got 224,000 miles on it. I have never put brakes on this. However, my front brakes are pulsating. For the sake of the video, I'm gonna go ahead and put new brake pads on it. I don't necessarily need new brake pads. They got a little bit of life left in them. I could have just, you know, replaced the rotors or cut the rotors and went on about my way but i kind of wanted to make it a break uh make a brake job video so that's i'm gonna just change brake pads i am machining the rotors i'm not going to replace the rotors there's nothing wrong with these they're plenty thick i can cut them so uh first things first all i've done so far is i took the two 19 millimeter bolts out of this bracket or not the bracket but the caliper itself this is the bracket this is the caliper so i'm gonna take it set it up out of the way. You can use hangers and hang your caliper out of the way if you want to. It's not going nowhere, so I'm gonna leave it there. Uh, go ahead and these have little, I don't know if the camera will pick it up, but they have little uh, like tangs that hold the brake pads in there. So you can't really get them out unless you depress the tangs or just you know bend them the fuck out of the way which I'm just going to bend them the fuck out of the way because I'm replacing them. Ugh, I'm too weak. Hold on. There we go. And you see that tang right there? That's what holds it. Get those off. Which, yeah, look at that. I mean, they're still, I don't know, 40 maybe 50%, so. But I don't care, I'm just gonna change them. Got new hardware as well. You take these off. Go ahead and toss them. Um, I would highly recommend that if you're doing brakes, check your box of brake pads. Make sure you have new hardware before you go taking them off and everything. Uh, well, you're gonna have to take them off anyways, but don't throw them away is what I meant to say. Don't throw them away. Make sure you have hardware first. A lot, and I mean a lot. Most manufacturers will say that their brake pads come with hardware. They will not give you any fucking hardware. They're hose. Anyways, uh, make sure the slides are moving. They are nice. If they weren't, you'd have to either unseize them or replace the bracket. There's multiple ways to unseize a seized up uh, guide pin one way would be if they're not very seized up a lot of times you can take like a flathead uh, or a pry bar or something grab that edge right there and hit it while the bracket's still on the vehicle so hopefully I'm getting all this in frame while the bracket's on the vehicle grab that edge and grab a hammer and smack this with a hammer and that'll it'll push that out it'll push that side that guide pin out another way would be to put a socket or a wrench or something on here. Um, try to spin it. Try to work it back and forth. You got to be careful about doing that, though, because you can actually snap it off in there. And once you snap it off, you got to change the bracket. So. But you might as well try that before you just go buy a new bracket. I don't know why you wouldn't. So try that first. Another way would be to heat this up. <laughs> I've actually, uh, I used to do it for fun. I'd put this bracket in a vise. And I'd take the oxyacetylene torch and I'd heat this up cherry red, this whole thing. And a lot of times what'll happen is they actually seize up here in the brackets, they seize right here. And the grease back here is still kind of fluid, um, it's still liquid. 
what will happen is when you heat that up so much, it'll basically create a gas in here and it'll pressurize this like a pocket. And this will come flying out with a lot of force. I've actually had these come out so hard. I've had them shoot across the shop. I've aimed them uh, at a concrete wall and I've taken chunks out of the concrete wall. Uh, stupid, wouldn't recommend doing it, but I've done it. And uh, so don't stand in front of it ever. Honestly, getting hit by that would be you know, pretty painful, but what would be worse is the molten grease back here is gonna be uh, landing everywhere, so. Very careful if you do it that way. Do it at your own risk. Uh, yeah, I'm just gonna leave it at that. Let me go get my impact, get this bracket off. These are they're 18s. They're Loctite and they're very tight. I sure as hell ain't reaching no fucking breaker bar. I ain't doing this by hand. What is this, the fucking 1700s? I got the motherfucking handbag. Take the bracket off. Get it out of your way. grab a few things because I want to talk about something on here. What I want to talk about is what's missing. There's supposed to be a T30 bolt that holds this rotor on. A lot of GMs are uh, well, yeah, okay. A lot of GMs use a T30 bolt there. Mine's gone, and it's gone on the other side too. And I don't know why, I haven't had these off, so it's either, I'm, I would imagine it's either broken off in here, um, which should have never happened, honestly, or uh, somebody took it out and they just didn't fucking put it back. I don't know why, but a lot of people do it. So when I first started, working on cars, this was my method to getting them out. You know, these are all T30 Torx bits. <laughs> I have like five of these. Um, they're all lifetime warranty. And then the impact driver, it's a snap-on impact driver, and I have replacement bits for it. These ones are for uh, Japanese imports, Honda, Kia, whatever, whichever ones use the Phillips heads. And I would always, that's how I would get them out. I would just stick that on there and hit it with a hammer. And a lot of times what would happen is the bit would shatter. Or I'd take, you know, this, I'd put it on my 3 8 impact on this GM. I'd put the thing in there and I'd go to break it loose and the bit would shatter. That's, it's pretty common. Uh, and that's what I get from a lot of people. I've actually seen quite a few videos where somebody would be doing a brake job and they don't even try. Like they don't even try to get them out because I'm in Indiana, so we have a little bit of rust and they don't even try to get these out. They just skipped it. They're just like, fuck this, I'm drilling it out. Which is so dumb. Cause I mean, I get these things out all the time. I wish there was a bolt in here so I could show you just how easy it is. It is so fucking easy. All you need is a hammer, a hammer. All you need to do to get that out of there, and trust me, those T30 Torx bits are all about five years old, and I haven't replaced one since doing this method. I've never broke one since then, since I started doing this. So if you're replacing the rotor, you know, and your and your bolts here, crack the fucking rotor over here. If, you know, if it's over here, crack it down here. You want to hit it on the other side because what you're doing is you're hitting this rotor. You know, you want to fucking boom you want to hit that motherfucker if you're replacing the rotor you can hit it out here and what's happening is it's just barely jarring that rotor like that and it's pulling on that bolt first of all and it's also rattling the hub which is breaking the rust that's holding it loose 
And, you know, you do that a few times, you know, crack the fucking rotor a few times, and then put that Torx bit on your impact, it'll come right out. They always do. Always. The GMs are Torx 30, uh, Fords are a T40, a Torx 40. Uh, and then, like I said, a lot of the Asian imports are, uh, a lot of the Asian imports are Phillips head. And then I think Dodge and Fiat, a lot of Chryslers actually have an Allen bit. The same method applies to all of them. Just hit the rotor, just hit it with a hammer. You know, you're gonna have to anyways. You figure if that bolt's rusted off, you're gonna be hitting the rotor anyways. So you may as well do it and save that fucking bolt because that thing comes in handy a lot when uh, trying to reinstall everything. Now, the other thing is, if you're not replacing the rotor, which I'm not replacing the rotor, luckily mine's loose, and mine didn't have a bolt in it. Um, instead of hitting it here, hit it here, you know? Hit it there, in between the studs. Don't hit the studs. If you hit the studs, well, you get a whole other problem. Don't hit the studs. If you don't have faith that you can't hit it in between, yeah, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> It's not that hard. Uh, get an air hammer. There you go. That's a good idea. Uh, I've done that before, actually. Uh, if you're trying to break it loose by hitting here, get an air hammer. Just brrr, rattle it right here. You know, I've done that a lot when actually trying to get a rotor to separate, a rotor that's like rusted to the hub. I'll take my air hammer and I'll brrr, and just rattle this whole area. And sooner or later, that rotor will start flipping like that and it's loose. given you have air tools and you have an air hammer you can do that way otherwise you're gonna be stuck doing it by hand which most of the time works for me anyways all right take this rotor off set it out of the way i am going to machine that um but i want to talk about the rotor face here oh yep look at that so I don't know if the camera will pick that up. That's the bolt. And it's not drilled because it would have like a concave like taper in, inside of there. Somebody just put something on there and broke it. And broke that fucker off. <sighs> Idiots. Idiots, man. But now we're looking at the hub face. What you want to do as far as cleaning this off, because you do want to clean this. There's three main parts you can clean on the hub face. This outer lip. Actually, I'll just hold the camera for this. This outer lip right here, you're going to want to clean all that rust off. You want that to be flat. This inner lip right here, that's what the rotor sets against. This is like a, a like an inner grooved area, you know, all through here from stud to stud. You don't really have to worry about that as much. Um, but this area here on the outside and the inside, you really want to get that clean. And the third spot is right here. You see all this white corrosion is? That's where your wheel goes on. So you really want to try to get all that corrosion off too because um, I have aluminum wheels. This is a steel hub. They're going to corrode like that. Might as well get it clean while you have everything off. So um, I'm going to go ahead and clean this up. Use whatever you can to get it clean. I'm going to go ahead and clean it up and I'm also going to machine the rotor. So I'm going to turn the camera off for a minute. I'm going to get all that done and I'm going to be back. Well, that was my first time-lapse video ever, so hopefully it turns out sick as fuck. Uh, anyways, I went ahead and cleaned up the hub as best as I could. This is an original hub with 224,000 miles on it, so it is pretty rusty. Uh, it's actually, this is probably the most rusty part on this entire vehicle. It's crazy. My truck is basically rust-free. Um, but this is pretty bad. I couldn't get some of this scaly shit off. I tried and, you know, I got as best as I could. It'll have to do, because I'm not changing the fucking hubs over some rust, I'll tell you that much. Uh, what I like to do is I'll use uh, white lithium grease and an aerosol can. You can use a lot of things. Uh, 
fluid film, uh, fluid film, I think. Yeah, fluid film's a pretty common one. Pretty much any sort of like lithium grease or grease compound or just rust preventative spray. Just spray it on the hub, get the axle nut and everything. Slow down whatever rust you can. Obviously, if that's the environment you're in, and if you're in fucking Florida, this $5 can of shit you don't need. So. Once you got that shit on there, um, I also didn't show, whenever I machine the rotors, I do clean up the front and the back of the rotors to make sure that they sit on the lathe perfectly flat. It's pretty important. If it's not sitting on the lathe flat, it's going to cut it uh, not straight. So. Since I don't have the bolt that holds it on, I'll just put a random axle nut on there and a nut, and that'll hold everything solid. I'm going to move the camera angle over to the bracket and show how to clean that thing up and what to do there. All right, so got the bracket here. I'll try to get a good angle on this. What I like to do is put it right here on my thigh. And I use this right here. I use a... My oh, come on. There she goes. Uh, but you can, you don't have to have anything fancy like that. You can use a regular, uh, like, square file. Just get in there and clean these edges up. Basically, anywhere the pad sits. Behind the hardware. Anywhere the pad touches in there. That's what you want to clean up. You want to get that rust out. Because rust jacking in there... It's just as bad as having a seized caliper or a seized pin. So if you have rust jacking in here and that pad can't freely move in the bracket, uh, it's gonna constantly be pressing on the rotor and that's gonna cause heat issues. You know, you cause bearing to go out. Obviously it's gonna cause premature wear, um, warp rotors, things like that. So you wanna make sure that these are all cleaned up. There's no rust here. That way your pads can move in and out. So that's what we'll do. That's what that should look like when you're done. Nice and shiny. Doesn't have to be perfect, but you want to get the majority of that off. Honestly, a uh, sandbaster, a sandblaster or bead blaster would be really perfect for this. good how I'm not sure how good my angle was on that but that's what we got we change the angle here again okay we'll take our hardware in my truck it's pretty simple to put this hardware on this stuff these clips just slide in and that gap that's all you have to do but a lot of vehicles, um, the hardware will actually, you'll push it on and these ears will stay down. You have to push them up. 
Otherwise, this will contact the rotor because you know your rotor is spinning right in here. If you don't push these up, it'll scrape on the rotor and you'll get noise. So make sure you do that. All right, those are on. Pull the slide pin out. Ooh, that was kind of nasty. I'm gonna clean that one up on the wire wheel. That one's nice. So this is how most of them should come out. They'll look like this. They'll just have basically dirty grease on it. If you guys can see it. Clean it up with a rag. You know, that's all metal, so we're good. Don't ever use any sort of petroleum grease. Uh, you need some sort of high temperature silicone based stuff for this. Nice thin layer on it. This is the stuff I use. Till I'm out, then I'll have something else. But Stick that back in there, make sure it's moving freely. It is. This one here, I'm gonna go clean up on the uh, wire wheel real quick. Okay, on this one here, I got the uh, slide pin all nice and cleaned up. I'm not gonna lubricate it just yet. What I like to do is I take a 3 8 drill bit. Be careful of what size you need to use. And I'll just take this and I'll go through this hole. This is a slow speed drill. So it's not damaging anything. I'm just kind of grabbing the edges and it's just pulling that dirt and shit out of there like that crap there. I'm gonna get that out of there. And then I'll take the bracket here and I'll spray it out with brake clean. Over here. Okay. This thing should just, yep, slides in and out nice and easy spray this out with some compressed air lubricate oops shit lubricate the slide not too much, but because I just sprayed that out, there's gonna be nothing in there now. So I'm gonna put a little bit extra on this slide. Push her in. There we go. Oh, what I just did there, actually, that's kind of important. So when you go to push this in, you see that? See how it's springy? So there's air in there. You just squeeze this. Let the air out, push it in. There you go. Now it's now instead of pushing out, it's being sucked in. That's good. That's what you want. You want to be sucked in. That's what I'm trying to say. You guys ain't listening. All right, I'm gonna tidy this shit up, shut the camera off for a second, and get everything back over the vehicle. All right, we're back at the vehicle. Um, that shit cleaned up a little bit. Now. I'm about to put these on the bracket bolts they're supposed to be loctite on these there's some left over in there but loctite on the bracket bolts and even the caliper bolts too um, the caliper bolts that go into the bracket is never a bad thing these bracket bolts are supposed to be insanely tight on pretty much every vehicle ever they're you know, the torque spec is always way more than you think it's gonna be. So what I do is I'll take some blue Loctite, and I'm actually running out here. Well, let me get a different one. Use whatever you got. Something's better than nothing. Um, I've got a shitload of this stuff, so I just use the blue. Oh, sucker. Eh. Got it. 
the hell? Oh, cool. I just jammed a little piece of plastic in my knife. <laughs> now it won't open. Blue Loctite. Man, this shit is just... Get better Loctite than what I have. Anyways, that's a lot, but that's good. Uh, I'm using blue. Like I said, any anything's better than nothing. I mean, if you got red, use red. If you got green, use green. If you got blue, use blue. Whatever you fucking got. Something's better than nothing. And a caliper bracket not coming off on its own is a pretty good thing, so. Start these bolts. People keep fucking texting me. I'm trying to make a damn YouTube video, fuckers. get my impact ready but I'm actually not gonna tighten them down yet now this vehicle the brakes the pads are different you'll just have to pay attention which one goes which on your own vehicle just in case there are minor differences like this one this one has a flat surface and then a raised surface the raised surface goes over this so the flat side goes on the inside and pretty much most vehicles again some vehicles are sep are separate from this different I always put the wear indicator on the inside facing down on the bottom side. Put that sucker in there. And these are actually kind of nice. They have little uh, lock tabs like I described or uh, talked about in the beginning of the video. So once you put the brake pad in there, it ain't, it ain't coming back out. Well, okay, well, if you pull on it, it will. I'm a fucking liar. Fuck you. Hold them. Tighten those torque to spec. Yep, those are torque. Now, get your caliper depressing tool. You can use a C-clamp and an old brake pad if you have a dual piston or even a single piston. It doesn't matter. Um, I just have this fancy tool because I do like 95 brake jobs a fucking week, it seems like. So, I'm going to slowly, don't just crank on it as hard as you fucking can, just give it a little bit of pressure. You ain't even got to squeeze hard. It'll go back in. Just give it a little bit of pressure. And I can see my boots starting to, starting to crease right there. I'm not really worried about that. I'm only worried about it if it starts to come out, like there's an air pocket in there. If there is an air pocket, just get a screwdriver, come underneath the lip of it, and pull the seal up let the air out that's all you gotta do push it in slowly yep see that boot went back to normal like it should you see my boots are all in there somebody put a little bit of grease on here which is okay you can put a little bit of grease on here if you want um indiana is not super rusty um, plus, I give this truck a car wash like four times a week, so mine doesn't get that bad, but that's the only real way to prevent it, honestly. Count them back on, bolts in, get your torque wrench, there's mine. I got the red one, it's pretty nice. There we go and we're good like i said you can put loctite on them caliper uh the caliper bolts themselves i sometimes do sometimes i don't this is my own truck i like to live dangerously so i don't you know all right well uh that's uh the longest brake job i've ever done because i decided to make a fucking video out of it like some dumbass there's probably 9 million other videos online of people changing brakes, thinking that it's something special. Eh, it is special. Honestly, for a full-time mechanic, brake job's a gravy, gravy job. You just get sick of doing them, honestly. I do. You take that off, and at this point, you're pretty much done. Don't forget to pump up the brake pedal before you... Uh, 
back out your vehicle, you know. Don't just jump in it, throw it in gear and expect it to stop because it won't. Uh, there's an air pocket between the caliper right now. You'll have to press the brakes to push the caliper, uh, the pistons out. That way they're actually squeezing. Um, otherwise, you're going to get in there and the pedal's going to go straight to the floor. Um, yeah, I think I covered as much as I could or should. Oh, wait a minute. Mm. almost forgot. Take a little bit of this, go around this inside lip. See what I got on my fucking rotor, bitch. Just go around that lip right there, and that'll prevent, or mostly prevent, press from uh, rust and corrosion forming inside of there. There you go, perfect brake job, most of the time, every time. Bye-bye.